Welcome to episode two of our series. In this episode, we take you on a virtual tour of four of our power stations, giving you a closer look at how our different types of stations operate and how they are being adapted to help meet modern energy needs. Let's start by taking a look at one of our larger stations. First up on our whistle stop tour of Scottish hydro stations is our expansive Tummel Valley scheme. Tummel was first built along with Rannock Power Station in 1931. Tummel Power Station is a 34 megawatt power station. It has two 17 megawatt machines. At full load, it will move 90 cubic meters of water per second. So that, that's 90 tons of water per second, which would fill an Olympic sized swimming pool in about 27 seconds. At full output, Tummel Power Station produces enough power to, to supply approximately 20,000 homes. The machines as they stand at the moment are almost original. Some control systems and some electrical systems, they have been modernized, getting a life extension replant. But the original plant itself, the way it operates, it is still original. There is a project moving at the moment, which is looking at a complete replant of the, the power station. Tummel's critical to the Tummel Valley scheme or the Tummel Valley Cascade. It sits right in the middle of the Cascade and it moves a significant amount of water. The Cascade is set up generally to pass water from the highest reservoirs right the way through to the lowest to maintain a flow, to give us space to absorb more water when it rains, um, but also give us the flexibility to generate when National Grid need us. The Cascade is nine power stations from, from top to bottom. So without Tummel, we would constrain four power stations upstream and also potentially not provide enough water to the power stations downstream. So Tummel's absolutely key within the Cascade. Tummel provides the ability to start and stop as required with relatively low run-up speeds um, and, and shutdown speeds as well. We can be producing 17 megawatts within 40 minutes. As um, the Hydro Operation Control Centre gets a call maybe from National Grid that something has happened elsewhere within the grid, these machines can come on and start to support the grid. Tummel also provides a lot of flexibility to the National Grid through its sheer bulk. The machines themselves weigh approximately 120 tonnes. That absorbs a lot of lumps and bumps within the national grid or within the network um, that may be from small wind coming on in the local area or solar coming on. So it provides a lot of stability to the grid as well. Situated in our AFRIC and Bewley hydro scheme to the west of Inverness, we'll now take a look at the Dini power station. Dini Power Station is one of our stations in the Hafrick Bewley scheme. It was commissioned in 1963. Unlike most of our hydro power stations, it's underground. Hafrick Bewley is a cascade section, which means that it takes careful management from our hydro operations centre in Perth to manage the, the inflow of water from stations upstream, but also to manage the market conditions and what might be required on the grid. The Afric Bewley scheme contains seven power stations and three major locks, of which Moner is one. There are also three smaller head ponds for our further down stations, and we have a combined total output of 169 megawatts, which is enough to power 130,000 homes. As with all of our power stations, we need a lock that is at a higher point than the power station. So for Dini, we have a height difference of 110 metres. The water is extracted from Loch Moner through a tunnel which is five miles long. It then reaches the Dini surge shaft building which is above the power station, at which point the water falls vertically through that 110 metres down to the turbines. The water is then discharged into Loch Benacheran downstream of Dini. Between 2016 and 2018, we undertook a partial refurbishment of the station. This involved brand new turbines and a full replacement of the control systems and high voltage switch gear. We also refurbished the bearings and the main inlet valves. This means that we can now rely on the station for another 30 years and we'll be generating green electricity into the 2050s. We now move to our Bredalbin Hydro Scheme by the Stranuic Reservoir. Stranuic Power Station began generating in 1958. Stronyerk Power Station is, is a small cog in a big wheel within the Cascade. It has a generating capacity of 210 kilowatts, which is small compared to some of our other stations. Stronyerk helps with flexibility and management of storage within the Cascade. Stronyerk Reservoir itself is quite small and actually fills and empties approximately 175 times a year, which is used to, to feed Lockheed Power Station. The Kaling Cascade uh, consists of three main locks and four power stations. 
It has a total generating output of 62 megawatts and a storage capacity of uh, 70 gigawatt hours. That 70 gigawatt hours can power approximately a million homes for about 70 hours. In 2019, we invested in Stronuik Power Station. There is a new machine that's been built using some of the existing main components that we couldn't remove, such as a spiral casing. The investments allowed the Stronuik machine to run very efficiently now um, and to manage the water level in, in the River Lion much better and actually give us a benefit of flexibility by holding more water back in Stronuik Reservoir. Forest is one of only four pumped hydro stations in the UK. Started construction in 1969 and it was an expansion of the old British aluminium power station at Forest Falls just along the road which has been there since 1896. The two machines were commissioned in 1974 and they are housed in two 50 metre deep shafts. So Foyers consists of two 150 megawatt turbines or a combined total of 300 megawatts. That's enough to power 650,000 homes in Scotland. When the upper reservoir is full, Foyers can run for 22 continuous hours. Foyers is really an incredible feat of engineering. The D-shaped tunnel, which is the low pressure tunnel system, can hold two double-decker buses side by side in it. When we are producing electricity, the turbines pass 200 tonnes of water every second. And when we are pumping water and storing electricity, we are passing 150 tonnes of water every second. 25% of the water that we use at Foyers comes from natural runoff and melted ice, and the other 75 is from Loch Ness being pumped back up into the upper reservoir. Pump storage hydro power stations are incredibly flexible and Foyers in particular is really flexible. We can go from not producing any power to producing the full 150 megawatts in just two minutes, but if we really need to, that can be reduced to 30 seconds. Foyers is really important, not just to SSE, but to Scotland. It's one of the major black start stations for the whole of the north of Scotland. This means that if in the event of a failure and the electricity system went down in Scotland, we would be able to restart the grid from foyers and provide electricity to the businesses and homes across Scotland. We hope this overview of some of our hydro stations has been helpful. In the coming years, our hydroelectric generation capabilities will be enhanced tremendously by the new Cory Glass Scheme, the first large-scale pump storage scheme to be developed in the UK for 30 years. With a potential capacity of up to 1500 megawatts, this scheme will help ensure Scotland is well placed to meet the energy demands of the future and contribute to the drive for a net zero carbon electricity system. To watch all the videos in this series, head to sserenewables.com forward slash hydro.